Yo, what up? Welcome back to another quick Flutter tutorial. I'm going to start a new small series on authentication. So signing users in with email, Google and Apple sign in. So for this video, we're going to focus on coding the UI for the login screen. And then let's use this in the following videos to implement the various authentication sign in methods. So I've opened up a brand new Flutter project and just to keep everyone on the same page, in my main function, I am running my app, which brings us to this login page. And I've got that in a separate folder called pages to keep our code nice and clean. So in this login page, it will just be a blank scaffold. So you should just have a white blank app like this. Now, the first thing to do is to prepare any images we might need. So for this login UI, we basically only need two images, which is the Apple logo and the Google logo. So we're going to use this later on for the authentication. And these images, you can honestly get them anywhere on the internet, but I'll have this in my code below so you can access these assets as well. So in your project, go to the library and I'm just going to drag my images into this library folder. And make sure to come back to the code and we have to tell it that we're going to import some assets. So just come to your pubspec.yaml and comment this out and library slash images and make sure to save that file. Cool. And in our login page scaffold, let's start decorating this. So for the background color, I like to have a slightly light gray as opposed to just having a completely white background. And in the body, let's have a big column. And let's just have a bit of a plan as to what we're going to fill out. OK, so let's just comment this. At the very top, I want a sort of logo and then let's have some text saying welcome back. And then we want some text fields. So the username and the password text field, a text saying forgot password. We also need a sign in button. And then we want to give the user an option to continue with another alternative sign in method, say Google or Apple sign in. And at the very bottom, if they're not a member, let's give them an option to register now. Cool. So this is the overall plan and let's just start filling this out. So for this logo, obviously that depends on your business and what your logo is. For this, I'm just going to put in any icon. Let's just put in a lock icon. Now you can see when you save it, I don't know if you can see that in the corner, but it's all scrunched in the corner, right? So let's just give it a big size. And one useful widget in Flutter is to wrap your column in a widget called save area. And essentially what that does is it just makes the UI avoid the notch area. So that's pretty, ha that's pretty handy. And let's just center this column. And by the way, in terms of like spacing the UI out, uh, it's a good idea to use sized boxes, which is basically just empty space. So. I'm going to use a lot of sized boxes to sort of space it out the way I want. By the way, Flutter really likes you to put these const tags. So let's just do that. Now, this is going to be our first text widget. Let's just say kind of like a greeting message. So welcome back. You've been missed. And let's just style this up. So let's make it a bit gray. And for the font size, you can see the default there is 14. Maybe I'll make it 16, just a little bigger. And let's just do another sized box, make it 25 this time. And let's start to fill out the text field. So on a very basic level, right? If I just say text field and you just save it, then you should be able to click on this little gap here and start typing in, which is good. But let's just make this look a little more modern, make it a little bit more elegant. So for the decoration, there's actually a couple uh, borders that we have to specify. So one of them is the enabled border. And so I'm going to make the border white. But then there's actually another border called the focused border. OK, so I'll show you what the point of each of these are. I'm going to make the focus border just gray as opposed to white. If I just save this and rerun it, you can see I've got a border now that's white. And if I click on it, then it will become the focus border. 
and we'll make that border gray. So this is just a good way, kind of like a good UX pattern to help the user know that they're in this text field right now. Now, I think this text field could use a little padding to get off the sides. There we go. And personally, I'm going to actually fill in the color and I'm gonna make it gray with a shade of 200. So I kind of like this look where you've got almost white inside the fill color, but then the border itself is completely white. So I think this looks pretty nice. Sweet, now if we wanna create another password text field, looks like we're gonna to have to just copy and paste this, right? Now this is making our code very hairy and verbose. So let's just put this in a separate file. And for these, I like to make the folder called components, just to have the different UI components. And so let's call it my text field and just paste what we created earlier here. Okay, so we can come back and go to the login page and now we can just say my text field. And so that cleans up the code so much, right? Now, if we need to make any specific uh, adjustments, we can just do it in the my text field dot dot file. So this is a good kind of common practice that you should be doing to keep your code nice and clean. What do we need next? Now, if you think about what differs between the two text fields that we have, we're going to need to um, give it the controller and also the hint text as well as the obscure text. So I'll explain these three things I'm bringing in. So starting with the controller, controller is basically uh, what we can use to access what the user typed in to the text field. So if you look under the text field, it always require, requires us to fill out a controller. And so, if the user types something in there, we can use the controller to access this information. And for the hint text, hint text is uh, what it sounds like. It's just a string, just to kind of hint to the user what should be typed in this text field. And the one last difference between the two text fields is the obscure text. Now, obscure text is a Boolean, meaning it's true or false. And this is just to hide the characters when you're typing a password in, right? You don't want the password to just be displayed. So just to show you what I'm talking about, if you look at the login page, my text field is now got a red squiggle because we have to fill out those three things that we just specified, right? So let's just come up to the top and I'm just gonna create the controllers for the text. Let's call it username controller and let's call it password controller. Okay, so we can just give these controllers to each text field. And the hint text, so what do we want the user to type in here? Let's just say username. And down here we want the password. Cool, and obscure text, remember this is a Boolean. So for the username, I want it to be false. But for the password, I want it to be true. So if you actually start typing in, the username, we can just display the characters, but in the password, it'll be obscured. So that's what that was talking about. Now the username and the password, the hint text seems a little bit too dark for my liking. I wanna make it more, more lighter. So you can specify this hint style. And yeah, I think a lighter gray makes it look better. Cool, so let's add another smaller sized box. And now let's just have a text widget saying forgot password. Now this, I actually want it kind of on the right side as opposed to the middle, but this column from the beginning, we set it to be centered, right? So kind of a nice trick to do is to wrap your text widget in a row, which if you save it, it'll automatically come to the beginning. Then we can set the main axis alignment to be at the end. So this is a nice little trick I like to use and then just use some padding for the row. Cool, so that's where I want it. Now let's just get another size box and for this one, 25. And now we're going to use a sign in button. So similar to how we created our own text field, just to make our code nice and clean, I'm going to do the same thing for the sign in button. So let's go to our components folder and let's create a button called my button. So for now, just in the middle, let's just create a text widget saying sign in and we can now 
come back to the login page and just say my button. There it is. And let's decorate the shit out of this. Okay, for this I want to make it black, which means my text should be white so that we can see it. And let's just add some padding. And you guys know I hate sharp corners. So let's go to the decoration and make the border radius a little curved, maybe eight. That feels better. And let's just finalize the sign in text. I want to make it more bold, more bigger. And cool. I think that's looking pretty good. And by the way, we want this button to actually be a button, right? Instead of just a, you know, container. So let's wrap it in a gesture detector. So we're going to need to create this on tap method. Now, if you hover over the on tap, you can see it requires this like function. So I'm just going to copy this, whatever it wants, and require it when we need to create this button in our login page. Okay, so come back to the login page. My button now has a red squiggle because we have to fill out the on tap. Okay, so we haven't created this method, obviously, so I'm just going to call it. Um, sign user in and for now it's going to execute nothing but we'll set it up nicely so that in the following videos we can just fill out those methods when necessary so for this one as I said we're just doing the UI cool so let's add another size box and this is a part that's kind of fun so I'm going to use a couple um, dividers now if you don't know what a divider is it's essentially just a line so if I show you divider and you save it it's kind of very faint so I don't know if you can see that right now so you can control this thickness so you can see that little line there right so this is kind of just helpful uh, when you're creating UIs so I'm actually going to create a row and have two dividers and in the middle I'm just gonna have a text widget saying continue with Sweet, I think that's looking pretty good so far. And finally, we are going to have the buttons for the Google and the Apple sign in. We're gonna to need to put it in a row since we have two objects side by side. And just to show you real quick, like if I use an image asset and I give it the path of where my picture is, right? That's the path here. If I save it, there it is, but it's huge. So we can actually control the height of this image. And so this is going to be a point in time where we go to our components and let's create one more thing and let's call it like a square tile. And again, if you think about what differs between the two tiles, like having an Apple button and a, and a Google button is the image itself, right? So I need to know the string of the image path when I create the square tile. So that then I can give it to this image.asset, right? So if I come back to my homepage, square tile, and I have to give it my image path, which is the library slash images slash Google PNG. And for the Apple, let's just change it to Apple. Cool. And remember, it was so big, right? So let's make the height smaller. Sweet. And let's align this to be in the middle of the row. And let's just space this out accordingly. Sweet, now coming back to the square tile, let's finish decorating this up. So I want to have a white border, as you can see there. And of course, we're going to have to make the border radius curved. And similar to the text field, I want the, the field color to be gray 200. So that it's got that white border around it. And I think this is looking pretty good. Sweet. And the very last thing is just to finish off with some text widgets at the bottom. We want to say, are you not a member? Then register now. And just for the register now, I just want to separate the text widgets so that 
um, we can make it blue for the register now, just to make it seem like a more clickable bit of text. Sweet, now the UI is essentially done. Now the very last thing that I always do is to go to the column, the overall column, and make the main axis alignment to be at the center. And so for our particular design on this iPhone 14, nothing really changed that much, but I like to make this aligned to the middle because it makes it easier when we are dealing with different screen sizes. So Yep, that's just a handy trick I like to do. But that's essentially it. We have a nice modern looking UI. So using this UI, let's try to slowly build on the authentication part of, you know, mobile app development. So I wanna be able to sign users in with their email and also some OAuth, meaning like Google sign in and Apple sign in. So that's gonna be the focus of my next few videos. So I'm gonna just build off from this UI. So I'll make sure to put the code for this below so you guys can take a closer look at it and play around with it. And let me know if you have any questions. I'll try to come around and help. But other than that, I'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next few videos for the authentication. So see you there. Peace.